Most of us around the country watched from TV screens and computer screens as pro-Trump supporters raided the U.S. Capitol building on January 6, 2021. But there's a group of lawmakers, staffers, and law enforcement who witnessed the chaos firsthand. Earlier in the show, I spoke with the Congresswoman Annie Custer of New Hampshire, who was trapped in the House gallery as violence erupted just feet away from her. Now you'll hear the perspective of another person who did their American duty in the face of danger. Brennan Leach was a 19-year-old chamber assistant on January the 6th, 2021. You can see her here. She's in the leopard print uh, dress with the white headband. She was tasked with carrying the electoral ballots from the House chamber to the Senate chamber to be counted. That was before the mob breached the Capitol. And at 19 years old, Brennan, along with many other young aides and non-elected staffers, and even our own reporters, were told to prepare for what might happen if these people entered the chamber and got access to them. So what does a 19-year-old do in that circumstance? How did she manage to make it out? Brennan Leach joins me now. She was a Senate chamber assistant in D.C. for a year. As you heard, her tenure spanned the day of the attack on the Capitol. Right now, Brennan is a journalism student at Northwestern <laughs> University. Brennan, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for what you, you did for the country. I, I, I know you probably knew it was an important job at the time. Uh, I, I doubt you thought you were going to make it into history for, for doing uh, what was for 200 years been perfunctory duty of carrying these, these boxes of ballots. No, absolutely not. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. And yeah, no, I mean, it's funny to look back now. I think we were all genuinely really excited for the day. We've been told we would have this special responsibility to transport ballots and we were getting dressed and picking outfits like it was the prom, which again, in retrospect, seems crazy, but um, it goes to show how little we knew about the day. Um, I apologize for the background noise, but uh, we had no sort of sense of where things would escalate and the danger we would face later as the day went on. So let's talk about when that happened. Uh, we, we're looking at these pictures of you carrying these things. I believe you're carrying them to the Senate at this point before um, uh, you had a sense of where things were going. When did you realize that things are getting real? Yeah, I mean, I think I lived in blissful ignorance most of the day. I actually remember standing by a window towards the back of the Capitol, looking at a crowd accumulating back there and kind of making light of it. It looked like a low turnout. Um, little did I know they were all at the White House for the rally at the time. And it wasn't until, you know, on the Senate floor, you don't have phones. I wasn't following the news. Um, it wasn't until Capitol Police came in, interrupted Senator Langford and told us, you know, you can't leave the chamber. Um, the Capitol has been breached. And even then, I just felt like I was in the safest place I could be. The Senate chamber being, um, you know, stormed by protesters was unimaginable to me at the time. And uh, the the real, you know, waking up moment was when I heard chants of hang Mike Pence and four more years on the other side of the wall. Wow. Um, I had no prior knowledge of how close they were, and that was definitely frightening. I, I guess unlike uh, members of Congress or people very familiar with the environment, how familiar, like, what did you, what did you, think to do? What were you going to do? Was somebody giving you guidance about where you were supposed to go or how you're supposed to act or where you're supposed to hide? Yeah, my first thought was get me out of here. You know, I definitely at that point hearing them banging thought like this can't be as safe as, as I'm being told that it is. And of course, Capitol Police did the best they could to handle an extremely rapid escalation of events there that day. Um, and it was about probably 20 minutes that we were on the floor before we were told, you know, just flee, wow. <laughs> run, get away. Um, and at that point, I mean, it was actually, you know, a moment of immense camaraderie. I remember kind of looking towards these figureheads that I, you know, look up to so much and I'm usually, you know, sort of just uh, grateful to be around. And all of a sudden I was running arm in arm with them and wow. asking them if they knew anything, getting questions my way as well. So it was uh, you, a lot of unity. In that moment. Let's, let's just get into some granular detail here. You told my producer that at one point when you were when you were going to flee, someone opened a door to the Senate chamber, told you to run. Someone even took your hand. Yes, my very good friend and fellow chamber assistant who's photographed in those pictures um, is a college runner. She grabbed my arm and I felt like that moment of her arm um, grabbing mine was when I really realized a sense of urgency. Um, I think I had just been so shocked by everything unfolding and so kind of unaware, again, not having any access to Twitter or the outside world. There were rumors. I didn't know what was true. And uh, her, you know, decisiveness and urgency is what really kind of clicked with me that, okay, they, I got to take this 
seriously. And then, of course, you know, running through the Capitol, um, you could see uh, protesters in the building, something I'd never seen before. You know, the Capitol for me is like, um, you know, my favorite place on earth. I never imagined seeing people like that storming the halls. And uh, it was, yeah, genuinely terrifying uh, there, kind of and, and there's there. There's adrenaline that goes through you and gets you through it, but you said that you, when you were, you could feel your friend shaking with, with fear. There's, there's real fear. Tell me about when you encountered the thing where you realized, God, this, this could go the wrong way. I was talking to Representative Annie Custer who said, we, we, we thought we might die in there. Yeah, like I said, um, you know, when our leaders um, are the ones we're supposed to look to in moments of urgency or uncertainty, um, you know, and they're panicking. I think that's really what uh, struck me the most. You know, my colleagues were scared, but to see, you know, Senator McConnell on the phone with his wife, um, Senator Klobuchar reading out um, what she could find on Twitter. She was one of the only members that had her phone in the chamber at the time. Um, that was a terrifying feeling. Um, you know, if these people are scared, gosh, what, what am I supposed to think? Um, and, you know, I think, again, everyone was doing their best to navigate the situation. But yeah, like I said, my colleague's hand was shaking. Um, I was just kind of in utter shock. And I think a lot of the processing of that day kind of took place after the fact when I started to put together the puzzle pieces of this crazy timeline. What a story. Brennan, thanks very much for what you did. Brennan Leach is the congressional aide who carried the votes through the Capitol on January 6th.